Okay, I dug out some of my small electronics that I've collected over the years, and what I have here is uh, it's a camera, but it comes with a DVR feature. And this camera was from, oh, probably around 2000 or something like that, 2002, or maybe even before that. And I'm going to read off what the camera records in, in the DVR part right here. You can see I've got the cords going in to the camera here for the inputs to record. And then you can see I've got the output right here. This is the output cord, but what I'm doing is I'm borrowing the output cord for the power so I don't have to run the battery. So on the end here, on the output, you got the composite here, but there's a power cord right here a lot of people don't know that that power cord there can power this up while you're um, displaying it like on a TV or something but the other thing is that that output is actually an input a voltage right here that allows the camera to be on without the battery but when you first start it up you have to have the power supply off put the battery in first and then when you see the screen like that then you can pull the battery out and then it's ready to record so I'm going to read off the features here oh let's see which one is that I wrote down some things here <clears throat> the thing about these is they're cheap and you can get them online sometimes even though the battery isn't the best and sometimes they wear down quickly um, there are some advantages to having this little thing. Um, so what we got here is it's a it's an Apetech model DZO V58, and this one records, or the DVR part records in 640 by 8 480. That's ASF MPEG4. That's a Microsoft format, advanced stream format. Um, about three uh, megabits per second of video bit rate so it's already a compressed file for the most part and then uh, PCM audio 350 kilobits per second what it does with the audio is it leaves it just the way it is and what it does is it makes the picture 640 by 480 so the good thing about the audio being left alone is you can slip AC3 through here like Dolby Digital and stuff like that and this camera has a two gigabyte card which is 60 minutes of video so some of the advantages of this little device here is one of the advantages is, is the video is already compressed so if you're saving space like on a hard drive or something uh, when the video is done it's relatively a small video and can work on quite a few devices because ASF can be converted by a converter or a lot of computers can play ASF with a VLC media player. Um, no computer to record, so as you can see I've got no computer hooked up. I'm recording TV off my cable box here. Allow pass through of DVDs. Another good feature about this is it doesn't stop the recording no matter what the input is, which means it doesn't matter if you have a, a DVD that you bought at the store whatever goes inside here it's going to record so it allows pass through of all digital video through there um, these are cheap to find online sometimes you can pick these things up really cheap uh, and they'll even probably throw in a battery or something like that these are older DVR type camcorders now so you just got to remember that's these are older so they only hold like a two gigabyte card um, another thing is it's portable and pocket size. You can see it's pretty small, so you can bring it with you. And as long as you can plug in the power supply, and as long as you can tap into uh, the back of something, a composite uh, connection in the back, like your cable box, uh, even your PS3, uh, PS3, uh, you know, and games, uh, PlayStations and stuff like that allow you to use component and composite and you can see I've got composite right here 
so that's good. Um, I can run uh, the PlayStation 3 through here. I can run the cable box through here. Uh, a lot of different options. Yeah, it's older technology, but hey, you can still uh, use these things for something. So what I did is I put a 2 gigabyte card in there. And once again, a uh, 2 our two gigabyte card is going to give you 60 minutes of video. So let's say if you're recording a a movie or something on a DVD, what you can do is uh, you can record half of it, like make a part one and then a part two, and then when it's on your computer, you can record it and, or I mean, you can convert it and make it into uh, parts one and two and stuff like that. So it's a ASF is really a great format in its uh, natural form because of the fact that it leaves the audio just the way it is. So if you've got EC3 coming through here, uh, whenever you convert that video to something else, you're going to have real clean, crisp, and clear audio because of that Dolby Digital coming through. So the EC3 or whatever's, uh, whatever it's pumping out, it'll accept. So, And as a video, too, uh, from a cable box, from a DVD player, and a lot of different things. A lot of people, when they bought these things years ago, they they didn't know that it had DVR capability where you could plug it into your TV and actually record your TV programs and stuff. They didn't know that, some people. A lot of people thought that, well, if my battery's not holding a charge or whatever, I should just get rid of it. They would throw these away because they thought that since the battery wasn't the best, there was no need to keep it, but they were kind of wrong because you can use the battery to trigger the device, and then all you got to do is plug in the power supply and then take the battery out, and you can start recording. So, um, the way it works is like this. You have the output right here. This is the output that you would play like on your TV if you wanted to show somebody video that you recorded. So one of these is a power supply that keeps it on so that you don't drain your battery while you're showing people stuff. So what you do is you pull this one out and you can see that it turns off. Obviously it doesn't have any power. But the way you trip it is in order to trip it you have to have the battery in first. Then you close the device because it's got to be shut down then plug it in so this is a little hack a lot of people don't know about I think if the battery is half dead that it ain't going to work because you always have to have the battery in but that's not true you can run it without the battery so you open it up and it automatically goes into that mode because it's got the jack plugged into it so it's already uh, that's already in TV mode now. Okay, now, here's the thing. People would think, well, I've got the battery in and I'm recording, so the batteries, if it isn't the best, it's going to die, and that's true. So what you do is you take your output cord right here, and your output cord has the power supply, but you don't have to plug in the composite part of it, just the power supply. You can see on the end there, there's a USB power supply right there. So what you do is you plug this in first before you take the battery out because if you take the battery out and plug this in it isn't going to work because you need something to trip it so that it's in its mode. Okay so now you got the power in. Now take the battery out and now you just hacked it to, to make it run. Press the cord. And now it's recording that video. And like I'm saying, it's got uh, two gigabytes in it. So it's going to be about an hour. So a cartoon like this, for instance, like Family Guy or whatever this is, um, you know, these, these would fit in one of them cards, I think. So if you're doing like a, an episode or something, that would be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it looks like on the computer after this here. So 
So what I'm going to do is uh, unplug this for now. And I want to show you the back of the cable box here. Oh, anyway, here's the here's the output cord. You don't have to plug this in. You just need the plug in for the power right here. Right there. But well, once again, remember you got to have the battery in first to trip it. Then plug in the plug in the output to borrow some of that power to to turn the device on so or to keep it on. So the back of the cable box here. There it is. It's a dish hopper and then in the back you can see I've got the the composite. It's not the component type, it's the HDMI and uh, the composite. The component would be the RBG, the red, blue, green cord, which borrows uh, right and left audio. So there would be five to that, but this device is older, so it's composite. So it's composite, meaning you got the video, the yellow, and you got the left and right, the red and white uh, cord there. So anyway, these are pretty cool because of the fact that they're they're small. You can still use them, even if the batteries aren't the best. And put a two gigabyte card in if you can get a whole bunch of them online real cheap. You can always erase the card, start over again. So anyway, I'm going to bring you over to the computer, and I'll show you that file. Okay, so there it is right there. So we're going to click on that. DCIM. And then we're going to go into 100 Media there. Like most cameras, they have all the same type of folders. And there it is. I took the audio out because of copyright stuff, but that's robot chicken there. And you can see it's perfect for viewing. Even though it's 640 by 480, it's still okay quality. And then what you can do with this video is you can convert it with your conversion programs if you have any. I have a lot of them myself and uh, put it on different devices because ASF can be converted very easy. So anyway, so just wanted to show you that too.